on August 2nd, 1954, at the direction of the United States Air Force, a testing program was initiated to determine the maximum maneuver performance of the B-47 airplane, both at high and low altitude. This test was the Combat Maneuvers Program. This film covers only the low altitude portion of the test. The test program was initiated to determine the feasibility of performing a maneuver which could employ bomb release from low altitude in non-level flight. Maximum escape margin for a toss bombing airplane is obtained by performing an Immelman turn. This then was the objective. Results of the test, if favorable, could effectively double the bombing capabilities of the B-47, thereby making the airplane a double threat weapon capable of delivering high yield weapons either in normal attitude or by toss bombing. The program was conducted at Wichita, Kansas by experimental flight tests in conjunction with the aerodynamics and structures units. The test airplane was completely instrumented for the program. Load data were obtained from strain gauge bridge hookups located throughout the airplane's primary structure. Wing moment, shear, and torsion. Body bending moment and horizontal and vertical stabilizer moment, shear and torsional loads were recorded. Airplane normal acceleration was measured at several wing stations. At the airplane's center of gravity, nose, and tail. Cameras mounted on the test airplane provided pictorial coverage of various airplane components. A camera located in the fin tip, directed forward along the longitudinal axis of the airplane, provided visual reference of airplane attitude. A camera was mounted on the side of the co-pilot's instrument panel canopy, directed at the left-hand wing leading edge and encompassing the inboard and outboard engine nacelles. mounted behind the pilot provided coverage of pilot technique in performing the maneuvers. Notice the large white-faced accelerometer in the center of the instrument panel. This instrument indicated normal acceleration at the airplane's center of gravity. The tests were conducted under rigidly controlled testing conditions. The Automatic Data Reduction Group, in cooperation with flight test operations and analysis and aerodynamics units, conducted theoretical calculations of B-47 maneuver performance in an Immelman turn. T-33 and F-86 fighter-type aircraft were used for pilot training and for chase airplanes. The basic equations used for theoretical analysis of B-47 performance were checked by flight performance of a T-33 airplane. This investigation revealed that the 12,500-pound T-33 was analogous with the 120,000-pound B-47. The T-33 was also used for pilot familiarization. These flights enabled the pilot to practice and attain proficiency in performing barrel rolls and Immelman turns. The F-86 Pacer was used to reconnoiter the maneuver site, 
prior to each test to acquaint the test pilot with the magnitude of turbulence in the area. The F-86 was also used as a photo airplane. It is of utmost importance that a pilot be thoroughly familiar with basic acrobatic maneuvers prior to performing maximum performance turns in the B-47. Smoke generators on the outboard engines were used to describe maneuver patterns. Prior to accomplishing an Immelman turn maneuver, the roll response of the B-47 was investigated. A series of barrel rolls was accomplished at air speeds expected immediately prior to rollout from inverted flight attitude in an Immelman. The roll response of the B-47 proved to be excellent in the speed range of 150 to 370 knots. In a barrel roll maneuver, positive load factor is maintained on the airplane at all times resulting in an altitude and pitch change. Full aileron deflection was used in the barrel rolls. The rolls were initiated from a 20 degree nose high attitude. The altitude loss experienced in the roll was approximately the same as the altitude gained in pull up to nose high attitude. Recovery was accomplished in every case at or above the altitude from which the pull-up was initiated. It is also extremely important that a pilot be thoroughly familiar with the lateral control limitations of the B-47 airplane at high indicated airspeeds prior to attempting the barrel roll maneuver. Pilot reports indicate that the barrel roll is a very comfortable maneuver in the B-47 and relatively easy to perform. Another phase of pilot indoctrination prior to the maneuver was a wind-up turn on the edge of buffeting. This enabled the pilot to fix in his mind the airplane characteristics when entering buffet at 3G load factor and established familiarity with stick forces at high load factors. This phase was very important as large magnitudes of load factor overshoot could not be tolerated in the Immelman. The test airplane was equipped with J47-11 engines. These engines were retained on the test airplane due to the cost and time required to convert to the higher thrust J47-25 production engines. The performance of the test airplane was conservative as approximately 5,000 additional pounds of thrust would be available in a production airplane. To allow for this thrust differential and increased conservatism, ATO was employed on the first maneuver. Pitch effects from in-flight ATO fire were investigated prior to the maneuvers. Negligible pitch trim change was required when ATO was used. The Immelman maneuver is a half loop with a half roll on top. It is the basic maneuver required for toss bombing. The half Cuban 8 is very similar to an Immelman, except that rollout is delayed until after the 180 degree pitch position is obtained. It allows faster airspeed buildup and return to low altitude. The diagram showing the profile and plan view of the maneuver, plotting altitude against horizontal distance and lateral distance against horizontal distance can best be used to describe the maneuver. Initially, the airplane is trimmed on about a 10-mile course to the initial point at limit speed. Just prior to the IP, a push force is trimmed into the airplane. This reduces the pull force required to conduct the maneuver. Upon passing over the IP, a pull force is used to apply the desired G to the airplane. The airplane continues to pitch in the first half of the loop. At about the 120 degree pitch position, 
buffeting occurs. At this point, elevator force is reduced and load factor is reduced as the airplane continues over in the loop to approximately the 10 to 15 degree nose down pitch position. At this time, the rollout is initiated. The airplane enters an erect dive of approximately 45 degrees at this position. The dive is continued at full throttle until limit speed is reached, at which point the throttles are reduced and limit speed is held until the airplane has returned to the initial altitude. By referring to the plan view, it can be seen that a heading change occurs. This is a result of the barrel roll maneuver which is executed at the end of the half loop. Positive load factor is maintained on the airplane throughout the half roll into the erect dive and causes this heading change. It is then necessary in the dive to roll the airplane slightly to return on a reciprocal of the bombing heading. The first Immelman was initiated at 6,300 feet, 456 knots, and minimum gross weight. 16 ATO bottles were fired to increase conservatism. This was the only maneuver in which ATO was employed, and the use of ATO is definitely not required to perform the maneuver in the B-47 airplane. trimmed in sufficient nose-up trim so that 50 pounds of push force was required to maintain straight and level flight. This is done to minimize stick force required to pull in and hold 3G. The severity of the maneuvers increased as the program progressed. This maneuver was accomplished at 110,000 pounds. The initiating altitude and airspeed were 458 knots and 6,000 feet. The gain in altitude was approximately 9,000 feet. The fifth maneuver was accomplished with a gross weight of 119,000 pounds. The airspeed was 462 knots and the altitude 4,600 feet. This sequence is representative of a typical 3G maneuver profile. part of the same maneuver is shown as it would appear to a ground observer below the flight path. Fared aileron position was maintained during the high load factor portion of the maneuvers to minimize asymmetrical wing loading. Notice how the wing flexes due to load factor. After the 90 degree pitch position is reached, the pitching rate increases rapidly. Rollout was delayed until the nose had pitched through the horizon approximately 15 degrees. The 11th maneuver best demonstrated the airplane's usefulness to the Strategic Air Command. The maneuver was initiated at 4,000 feet and 460 knots with a gross weight of 130,000 pounds. The smoke generators were employed in five-second bursts to describe the maneuver flight path. In general, the test showed that a gain in altitude of approximately 8,500 feet is experienced if a 3G load factor schedule is maintained up to the 120-degree pitch position. This sequence illustrates the heading change that occurs in the rollout from inverted flight attitude.
load factor overshoot did not exceed 2,500 G in any of the maneuvers despite moderately turbulent conditions. Overshoot was reduced as skill was acquired in performing the maneuvers. The method used by the pilot in performing the maneuver was to initially pull in and hold the predetermined load factor schedule up to initial stall buffet. From this point on, the airplane was held on the edge of stall buffeting for the remainder of the maneuver. The maneuver was a half Cuban 8 type. Rollout was started after the nose had pitched down approximately 15 to 20 degrees. Moderate buffeting was felt at the vertical. The pilot immediately relaxed load factor and stayed on the edge of buffeting for the remainder of the maneuver. Notice in this spin tip shot that the airplane appears to stop in midair. This was due to relaxation of load factor at buffet entry. After recovery to erect dive attitude, the airspeed was allowed to build up to 425 knots with full power, at which time the throttle was chopped to the idle stop and recovery made at the initiating altitude. The 12th maneuver was initiated at 4,000 feet and 450 knots. The gross weight was 120,000 pounds. The maximum G was 2.5. This condition proves that it is not necessary to hold a 3G load factor schedule in performing an Immelman turn in the B-47. This maneuver would be useful in a tactical situation. The 5 tenths additional G available would act as a cushion and allow a margin in cases of over control on the part of the pilot or for other unforeseen conditions such as turbulent air. Time to get around is somewhat longer. The gain in altitude was 10,000 feet. It is readily apparent that a sensitive accelerometer is mandatory for performing the Immelman turn in the B-47. As mentioned previously, load factor overshoot cannot be tolerated as the airplane is operating at design limit load factor in most of the maneuvers. The 13th maneuver of the series demonstrated that a wide range of initiating altitudes could be tolerated. Pull-up was begun at 9,000 feet at 440 knots. The gross weight was 100,000 pounds. Pilot technique was the same as the previous maneuver, and the return to initiating altitude was achieved as rapidly as possible. Notice the nose down pitch angle prior to rollout. This allows faster airspeed buildup and more expeditious return to initiating altitude, which would therefore provide maximum separation between the bombing airplane and point of bomb detonation. These tests were highly successful. The B-47 has proved to be a double threat weapon, capable of high altitude level flight bombardment, and now a second accomplishment, low altitude maneuvers required for toss bombing. This represents maximum utilization of the strategic air command's Sunday punch.